Just one thing quick here guys before we jump into this video, I wanted to talk about the engine and a mistake I made. So when my engine builder, I thought I heard him say like don't put lubricant on the threads when cranking down and torque, I should say cranking, torquing down uh, the ARP studs. If you guys look back from a video I did six years ago, I did it the right way then and I just misunderstood him this time. Um, I followed the book uh, to the T on mine. Uh, what he was saying is, you know, lubricate the nut, which I did do, uh, but he said also lubricate the threads. Very, very conservative. He said, do not go crazy with these. I put like a fine amount on it, doesn't need a lot. Uh, he did say though, again, I wanted to reiterate this, do not put it on the washer. He said, you know, the book can say one thing. He's like, there's a lot of things the book can say, but you know, in our testing, we've seen, you know, the stretch is never the, the way it should be. It's not correct. Uh, so he's saying, do the nut, do the threads, but do not do the washer. Um, again, these guys, and this is not just him, this is coming from all the builders there at IEG and stuff, um, pretty much saying like, don't do that. So uh, I did have to retorque the head, so I just wanna mention that. I did make a mistake there, guys. That was in two videos ago, so I apologize. I don't know how to like really rectify that. I should go in that video and rectify it there, but I just, I can't. There's no way for me to like edit that out. So I wanted to mention in this, but I digress. Uh, we'll get you to why you guys came to this video today, since you guys already saw it. So I'll shut up now. You guys can watch this video and hopefully uh, you guys enjoy it. Now we've got timing gear and stuff on here. I love this thing. This billet piece from Powerhouse Racing is beautiful. But what we're gonna do here next, guys, is I wanna get you the part number here. So here's the part number for it. See if you guys can see it there. That is for this here. This is your tensioner, okay? Comes with a little firing pin in it. Um, when you install this too, it's two 12 millimeter bolts. And for these bolts here, they are centering bolts. So if you can see here, they help center it up. I don't know if it's 100% necessary, but I always reuse them. I'm going to put a little bit of blue Loctite on these two just to make sure they don't back out. Um, but nothing too crazy. So uh, I don't know what the torque specs are for these. Usually it's Ryan tight, um, but I just don't want it to back out. So yeah, just goes in there. And again, you can see this let's sit here. It'll sit in here like so, like that. And you know, I'm keeping this pin in because that's what actually puts tension on it then. So do not remove that pin. You want to leave that excuse me, you wanna make sure you leave that in uh, until you actually get the belt and everything else on. So do not remove that pin, uh, but I'm gonna go ahead and throw the bolts in. So that can actually just hold itself there real quick. Just throw these in. Yeah, again, it's not rocket science here. As I probably say, they probably won't thread in and be like, what is going on here? There we go. Come on. Yeah, they're both threading in. So again, they are centering bolts. So I guess it does matter. Um, I did this on both my engine and the wife's. So obviously Toyota did this for a reason, so I kind of just stick with it. And then I just need to tighten it down. And I didn't use blue Loctite like I said I was. Um, doesn't tell you to use any in the book, so I'm like, uh, I guess you don't need it if the book doesn't tell you to use it. All right, so since we got the oil pump, water pump on, I went ahead and bolted on the uh, Mac valve here too. Let's go ahead and start installing the Powerhouse Racing rotator neck. Uh, so this is their latest iteration of it. Here it is. You want to see the name and the part number there, but you just go to PHR and get this. Uh, it's a rotator neck, which takes the neck from, instead of sticking out like this, so normally the water neck sticks out like this. Well, you run a big turbo kit, and this runs right in the line. Instead, this takes it and rotates it like so. Runs it straight down. One, aesthetically, it looks better and gets out of the way for when you're running intercore piping and gets out of the way of a tubular manifold. So what they do is they give you this little piece. It's just literally a rotator, and it is designed to house the factory thermostat. Now. Thermostat needs to go in a certain way. See this little guy here? That's your pressure relief valve. That needs to be at the top part of it. So when I position it here, I'm gonna have to get it set up. So I'm probably gonna set my camera up to do this, but this needs to go in a certain way. You're gonna need a thermostat, which is this part number here. So that's a factory thermostat. I do not use um, the TRD one. I never saw the point in it. Again, we'll see how things go, but I've never saw the point with the proper radiator and water and coolant setup. Never seen the real, real, real reason for it. It will also come with this little ring that goes inside of your factory turn down neck. Now I have an NA one. I wish I had a twin turbo one, so it'd be a little bit longer. Um, it comes down better to get a hose on it. So I got to see if I can even use this or if they're, because PHR also sells a coolant hose that goes directly to us designed for it. Or you can cut down a factory one, which I did for years, but I just kind of went around a PHR one because it looks cooler. I'm not doing AN on this car like I did my wife. So I want to go back to regular hoses just because it's easier. Um, but this pops in here like so then. And then these short stubby ones go into here. So they bolt into this side. You can see those recessed holes. They bolt into there, which then bolts into this. All right, those two holes. And then the other threaded holes are for these long bolts, which go through these two holes and use these two bolts. Pretty simple setup. So over here, you'll see the thermostat and you'll see that little node looking thing. So let's get it to focus here. So that is your relief. You wanna get this to position right there in the center, okay? So if you're looking at the Powerhouse Racing label, you come down 
and it should be just like that. It shows you online to do it that way too. And again, there's a, uh, a reason for that. So I'm just gonna tighten this up a little bit and now I gotta crank it down, but then that'll hold it in. And that's where you wanna do it or have this little pressure relief valve. That's how factory designed it too. So you wanna make sure that's facing up. That'll actually really affect how this works and uh, how the coolant is affected too. So make sure you have that facing that direction. All right, and that's what your water neck should look like when done. Now I have it kind of loose right now because I'm not sure if I'm gonna use this one, if I can find a TT one because the TT one is slightly longer, comes down to here. Not really a big deal. It doesn't matter that much, um, but I kind of would just want one. Might even clean this up a little bit, take it off. because This looks nice here, um, so might as well. Uh, and not, you'll really see it once the manifold's on, but the engine's out, it's one of those things, they might as well do it. So next up, we're doing the, the tensioner, okay? Factory, this is a cast aluminum piece, okay? This is a Marks Engineering, and if you remember Marks Engineering, they um, were great and bad all at the same time. They had some issues, they had some good and bad, but this is one of the things they got right the first time, unlike every other manufacturer, that they put a brass bushing in it, like the factory did. Back when they did this, no one else was doing it. Uh, they were, everyone else was just getting a steel piece and saying, you know, it's stronger. Well, the problem is, with the two dissimilar metals, they would mar themselves together, and it would call, cause this bolt here to literally mar itself together with the steel inside of this, and it would cause it to lock up, and it causes your engine to go kaboom. So Marks Engineering went ahead and put a brass bushing in this, had the steel pin put in here. Um, this is an anodized like silver color. And I do have other ones here, but I really like this piece. I just think it, the fit, the finish on it's really nice. They did it really well. Now everyone else now is now doing this whole brass bushing. Some guys are using aluminum billet, some guys aren't. I prefer the steel, I know it's a little bit heavier. I prefer it. Um, it's just a little bit stronger. It just gives me a peace of mind, especially with a manual car. I just feel better about it. Uh, coming down to the bolt too, always inspect this. I recommend either putting uh, some type of oil on this, even though this has the brass bushing, putting some type of oil on this here or some anti-seize. Uh, very, 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 very conservative amount. Okay, be very conservative with it. Don't put very much on it. Um, the other thing you want to make sure of is this uh, washer. So when I did that, I think I have even have a video from years ago, but this washer, let's see if I can get it to focus on the inside edge here. See that little bevel? Let's see if I can get it to focus on it there. There's a little bevel on both sides of this washer. That allows this to not get stuck on itself. So when you're tightening this down, it won't like kind of cinch in on itself. That bevel keeps it from doing it. And this only goes to like 29, 29 or 28 foot pounds. It's something small. Um, even, and I'll just be honest here, in the past when I had that, my old engine, I literally just cranked it down, just put on this, what size is it? It takes a 10. Um, 10 is what you use to crank this side down, and I just cranked it by hand. Use blue Loctite, then cranked it down. So I never did anything crazy. This time around, I am actually going to torque it down. Just been a little bit more cautious this time. Um, this hole though, guys, so if you actually look in here, it actually goes the whole way through. I've never had, knock on wood, never had any leaks, but just put some uh, blue Loctite on it and make sure it is cranked down, because if not, it will leak out of that hole. So that actually goes in through the oil pump. I'm surprised Toyota didn't make that a blind hole, but yeah, it is what it is. So yeah, just be aware of that. If you don't crack it or crank it down properly, it uh, could possibly leak and you don't want that getting down near your belt. Again, I put anti-seize on it there. We're actually lifted up. You can see I put anti-seize on it there. Now sit it down. Again, you want to put this washer on next. Okay, and then we're gonna put some blue Loctite on this here. Uh, and then again, 29 foot pounds is what you're gonna crank this down to. Again, guys, see the bolt here. Uh, I'm gonna try and get this started in. So let's do it like this. Take it and put the tool on it and just get it lined up. There we go. And you wanna check it too. You should have plenty of play. See how I have play in this like now? Now again, crank this down to 29 foot pounds. And again, I found out like you know, over cranking it in the book, um, you wanna make sure you stick to that. So if you go to like 30 to 35, I don't think that's gonna kill you. Um, but don't go like crazy. I think in the past, I could have really actually caused some severe issues. So I'm trying to really stick to it. Uh, I'm gonna go slightly over when it says 29, but it'll go to 30, one foot pound over and just leave it there. So, so guys, don't judge me, but I have to use my half inch. This actually goes to 250 down to 12 and a half foot pounds. It's what's nice having a digital one, but I set it to 30. So um, let's take this one out because that was three eighths. Let's use a half inch head. I don't like to use an extension if I don't have to. Thankfully I have a gear wrench 10, but I can't, I'm not gonna put much pressure on this to get to the desired uh, torque rating I want. So you guys will just listen. So 
So here when it, so when my torque wrench, just so you guys know, when this torque wrench beeps, I'm just gonna show you guys here. This is how this works. So when this beeps, you'll watch, watch the numbers here. So watch this here as I press down, press down. And I get closer. When it turns red, that means, hey, you've reached your desired reading. So it gives you a little warning beep and then it stops then. Pretty cool. All right, guys, so next up, we're gonna go over the uh, crank sensor setup here. So this sensor is going to be specific to the 36 and two crank gear. So we go over here to the car or the engine, I should say. Got this bolt on here, but pull this back a little bit, see a little bit better. But see how many teeth are on this? If you have a 12 tooth gear, which I believe I do have one, Yes, here we go. Let's do this so I can show you guys this so you can see the difference and I've got a sensor in there, too So here is a welded 12 tooth gear. So this is what a factory 2JZ GTE VBTI uses and This is what gives you your crank trigger. So there's 12 teeth So as this spins around there's 12 points that it can read for the crank position Versus the late model VBTI uses 36 teeth the more teeth the better the resolution now the problem with this is though, and I had to find out the hard way is, the cam sensors are the same for every engine. All the cam sensors are the same. The crank sensors are different. If you have a 36 tooth sensor or a gear, you must use this sensor. But this is the sensor you need if you're gonna use the 36 and two. Um, brand new from Toyota. The one thing I noticed right off the bat though, this is a lot shorter, which I actually like because nine times out of 10 when I get the wiring for this, I have to almost like curl this up. So this should come up, I'll fit it up right in between here, boom, and connect to it. So just want to show you guys that. I'm just going to pop it in here quick. Also, I use a factory bolt with this. I'm always unsure to use stainless steel because I believe it grounds itself out through this. See how that comes off of it and uses that as a ground. Stainless steel doesn't work as well, so I always use a factory bolt. Just clean this one up. Try to clean the threads up there too. I use these little brass bushes, brushes. Um, I have a friend get these for me, but I use these a ton just to clean up threads. Um, they make tools actually to do this too, but I just hit it with that. So if you see what looks like orange, that actually isn't rust anymore. That's actually the brass kind of transferring itself over to the bolt itself. So let's go ahead and bolt that up and then we'll do the rear, ret uh, rear retainer. Okay, guys, next up is doing the rear retainer. Now, if you watched one of my previous videos, I kind of went over this, but I'm gonna do it again. Um, for the retainer piece, so this aluminum piece, you can reuse. Um, I got a new one just because uh, they're actually really cheap. So there is the part number for that. Then the seal itself is over here. So seal tight, there is the part number. Um, again, you're gonna need Toyota FIPG for this. Now I've already installed the seal. You wanna make sure it's to the mating surface of the face. I've cleaned up all the bolts, cleaned all the threads off. And I'm gonna go ahead and take these all out now. Just wanted to show you guys there's in there. Whoops, take those all out, set them off to the side. Flip it over. Again, you got one spot here for Toyota FIPG. Again, just like we do with the uh, oil pump, everything like that, clean this off with the brake cleaner. Clean off the back of the engine here. Clean off the face here. Now the snout area, put oil or grease on it. It tells you to do that so in the book. And then it's got two locating pins here and here, and you're gonna slide up and around. This can be a little bit troublesome trying to get it on. Do not damage this lip. Um, I was already playing with it to make sure I can get it on, but this has a 15 minute window. So it sucks because sometimes you gotta play with to get this stuff on. And it really sucks because when you got it on the stand, it makes it a little bit harder. Now I've got enough room here, but it would be nice if I could just physically just look at it directly, but it is what it is. Um, I even thought about waiting to put it till it's in the car, but I'd like to get it on now. It's one less thing to forget about. Make sure it's torqued down right. Yeah, just I'd rather do it now. When we did Colton's, we did it in the car. It makes it a lot easier because you're just physically there. There's nothing blocking you. So just wanted to show you guys that. Um, but now let's go ahead and install it. And then these need to be torqued down to a certain setting, which I need to look up in the book. And I'll give you guys that too. All right, guys. So you can see that the retainer is in there. You can see some of the FIPG came out the size. 78 inch pounds. Uh, same as like you're doing the lower oil pan. So just want to show you guys that. Um, nothing crazy there. So it is on. Uh, again, make sure that's sealed up. You can see that the lip is on there too. So nothing crazy for doing that guys. So thank you again guys for tuning in today. So that's going to be it. And uh, on to the next video.